creator of the Filthy American social media Instagram page. He is a young, new, and upcoming conflict journalist who is using social media to uh, record and host uh, many of his uh, uh, very interesting takes about conflicts and uh, geopolitical events around the world. You can check him out on Instagram at The Filthy American. We talk about what it's like to host such content on a Facebook-owned platform. We talk about uh, conflicts in general, what it's, uh, what it's like to be a conflict journalist in a new media, social media space. Very interesting conversation. Hope you enjoy. Hey, Chase Baker with The Filthy American. New media, conflict journalism. Very interested to talking and speaking with you and talking with you. Um, pleasure to finally meet you. I wanted to get you on to um, kind of talk about your social media presence, what it means to be covering um, the areas of conflict and geopolitics that you are. Um, everything seems very interesting to me, and it's, uh, uh, it's a pleasure to have you on today. I'm glad to be here. Appreciate awesome. having me. So let's start off with... Um, I guess providing listeners who are not familiar with your social media presence, um, maybe provide an introduction about yourself and 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 about uh, the social media um, uh, the social media uh, channels that 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 you are growing right now, and and what all of that means. Give us a background. Yeah, so um, I want to say about ten months ago now, uh, I started the uh, the Filthy American. I originally started as only an Instagram page, but uh, now I'm attempting to move on to other platforms such as YouTube, uh, Twitter, mainly just YouTube and Twitter and Instagram. But our, our Instagram page uh, is where we do most of our work and what we usually post, where we usually post things. Um, but I, I essentially what happened is, is like I, uh, I grew up in the Middle East um, as a child up until I was the age of 13. I grew up in uh, northern Iraq. Okay. Um, and so I always had a really... I always had an interest in geopolitics just because as growing up as a child, it directly affected my life in multiple ways. And so I always took that interest with me throughout, you know, high school and into college. And I realized that I really needed an outlet to kind of express my passion for geopolitics. And I decided to, you know, do what I do now with the page. That's cool. Um, so you decided on creating the filthy American. Tell us what um, led you up to, um, using that name uh, and 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 basically what the what you set out to do. What what were the original goals that you wanted to achieve with with um, uh, documenting uh, a variety of different conflicts um, through this Instagram page, the Filthy American? Right. So originally, um, it was it was very simply uh, it was just a passion project. Um, you know, I really I really love you know reading about geopolitics, and you know, if I ever told my friends about it, they always you know. I kind of got an earful and so I realized I needed an outlet and you know I saw guys like uh, Atlas News and a couple other accounts that were doing things like that you know reporting geopolitics on Instagram and I thought you know I might, might as well give it a shot um, but the name the filthy American I don't know I just I, we thought I thought about it for a while I was like I wanted to have something original but also somewhat provocative you know and I think it I think it works really well because um, I've noticed, especially in the comment sections on my posts, there's a lot of debate, which I like, which yeah. means that a lot of my followers aren't one-sided, which I, sure. I enjoy that. Um, and so if you think about it, the name, the filthy American, you know, if somebody, you know, despises the U.S., like I say, they're U.S. citizen, they despise right. the U.S. and their foreign policy, like, oh, hell yeah, the filthy American, I like that. But then like, you know, maybe some like 19-year-old Marine Corps, you know, cadet might be like, oh, the filthy American, that sounds dope. Yeah, no, that's that's interesting. So, uh, for people who haven't been to the Instagram page, what kind of stuff, what kind of stuff, or, or would somebody find? Like, describe what 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 the what the sort of um, the brand is of, of of the channel. Like, what 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 kind of what kind of content are you actually um, publishing there? What are you what are you actually looking after? Why do you choose some um, some aspects of of uh, conflicts around the globe and, and not others? Or tell us what what goes into it all. Right. Right, so I, I would say w without a without a doubt, what I try to post are things that you generally will not see um, from a mainstream news source. Um, so my, I like to think about what I do is I step in 
like uh, the example, a great example would be the whole Kabul situation, right? Okay. So with, you know, with the U.S. Um, leaving Afghanistan, that, the entire, you know, crisis that occurred at the airport in Kabul and everything, you know, that was obviously a very big deal in the world. Everybody was, ha- was paying attention to it. But what was interesting is that, um, you know, m- me and other accounts like mine were able to step in because we already had these uh, open source Intel networks set up. We were able to get uh, information faster, quicker, and get like raw video off the ground before you know mainstream media was reporting it. But um, to answer the question about what somebody's going to find on my page, um, it's generally be things that are, pertain to geopolitics um, that take a little a little bit of a deeper dive. Um, we haven't done we haven't done as many deep dives as recently, but. Um, what we want to do in the future is we want to really get into the, the nuts and bolts of geopolitics and what's likely to happen in certain countries. Um, and, you know, it, it, the problem is, is that, you know, most people go about their daily lives and, the, and they don't really pay attention to this stuff, which is understandable because, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily affect them directly. But, um, you know, I guess what I wanted to do was kind of create a home for somebody that, you know, finds these types of topics interesting. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I I came across your um, your your page uh, through some of the others that you listed. I know um, Popular Front, Jake Hanrahan's um, um, uh, new media sort of organization uh, has been inspiring to you, um, and a few others. Rose Warfare. I think you named a couple of others at the top of the of the mm-hmm. show. But um, um, do you have uh, relationships with them, or or what what is um, uh, yeah. How, yeah. How, how have you operated with, because I mean, there are other channels as well, but um, yeah, tell us about that. Yeah. So um, I would say off the top of my head, I think there are about six, six big accounts on Instagram um, that, that do the type of reporting that I do. Um, definitely the most established one um, is, you know, Jake Hanrahan and what he's doing in Popular Front. Um, however, um, the, I do have, you know, I do have relations with uh, people that run the pages like Rose Warfare, um, Atlas News, um, a couple other pages. You know, they've they've generally been very supportive. Um, you know, because we're all in the same boat here. Sure. Um, we're all trying to do the same thing. Right. Um, but they've been they've been great guys. Um, I got, I got a good. All I have is good things to say about them. You know. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I mean, I guess I'm curious then, like, why Instagram? Because I mean, it seems like. There are so many avenues to publish this stuff, mm-hmm. right? You can make your own mm-hmm. website and you can publish articles, right? You can even publish videos and content and stuff. Um, you can go with Instagram, like what you're doing, and these handful of uh, of, of um, reporters are are using. Other people stick uh, solely to Twitter. Um, there are a variety of different ways. Other people just, like myself, I just have the podcast. I use Instagram to kind of promote the podcast. Um, I've flirted with the idea of doing something similar to um, what you guys are doing, but I almost, I get a little bit disillusioned because I'm like, ah, you guys are, you guys haven't covered. Why, <laughs> why do you, right. why, why, why do you need another one? But uh, um, the, that's the other thing too. I mean, th- th- just because, and tell me if you agree, just because another channel um, starts maybe doing this doesn't exactly mean that other channels lose, right? It's just, uh, um, it's more interesting content and more, more, um, there's more, more uh, pieces of the pie to share with everybody. Yeah, you know? without a doubt. And you, we think you have to keep in mind, barring popular front, I'm pretty, I, I don't know too much about what Jake has got going on, but I'm pretty sure he has, you know, he either works with people or he has people working for him, but the majority of the accounts that do what we do, it's just run by one person, you know, and, you right. know, we don't really make a living off of this and it's more sure. just our passion. So, you know, we only have so much time to dedicate to, providing accurate information that, um, it, you know, in a good way that's substantial for somebody that's going to read what we're going to post. So, you know, I, the way that I look at it is that, you know, if you follow all the accounts, yeah, you might get things that are very similar, like similar posts about a certain, you know, event or topic or something. But at the end of the day, you will get a, a wide net of information because, you know, each of us, each, you know, admin of the page has their own personal interests. And, you know, you really see that shine through with what they post, you know, what, right. what, what, what I post. 
yeah, you certainly can can decipher some of the personalities behind these accounts with with the jokes or the memes that they post. Or <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I, know, I know you have some of that too. So I mean, your page is very entertaining, which is you know one of the one of the reasons I wanted to have you on. But uh, but yeah, do tell me what. So why Instagram? I mean, was there is there an impetus behind that specific medium, or um, or, or are you planning to branch out and go onto other platforms? Yeah. So um, Instagram. I chose Instagram mainly for three reasons. Uh, one, I was already very familiar with the platform. Um, I understood how it worked, which is very simple. Um, but two, um, I, you know, they had, there were already other accounts doing the exact same thing. And I saw them having some moderate success. Um, and the third reason is that, uh, you know, the only other platform that really interests me um, in terms of branching out towards would be YouTube. Uh, the issue is, is that the time commitment to, you know, producing a, a quality video sure. um, or just producing anything is so much higher than what you could do on Instagram. The thing is with Instagram is, you know, you, for example, let's just say, okay, there was a, there was a drone strike in uh, like Kurdistan, Iraq. Okay. Like in our bill. Um, okay. I see it on through some of my sources. I got it. I check multiple sources to try and make sure they're all saying the same thing. Um, I get the video within, within five minutes of me getting the news of it happening it's up. You know what I mean? Um, YouTube for me would be something that, you know, I would want to do like more uh, like video essays or, you know, in-depth like, video articles, if you will, about certain topics that would be more along the lines of like, you know, predictions or, you know, an in-depth look. Analysis. Certain thing. Yeah, exactly. Sure. I mean, yeah, I, I know. I totally understand that. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, getting experts and, and, and other people who are involved in this field um, is already challenging enough, much less trying to get them on video to talk um, about some of the some of the things that are happening in the world and then publishing that to YouTube. Um, but yeah, no, fair enough. Um, I, I, yeah, I just found I found it interesting that so many of these accounts are hosted on Instagram. It, it, it seems to me a challenge, I guess. A little bit of a technical question. I mean, you have to do this all from your mobile phone, right? I mean, you're you're writing <laughs> posts and things on a very on a on a on a on a small phone, right? I mean, isn't that isn't that like uh, a little bit tedious and time consuming? Oh, it, it definitely is. Um, the way that I found a workaround is um, because I uh, I use Apple products. I'm able to I'll write through notes on my computer. Um, I write the notes on my computer and then they'll uh, link to my phone. I'll just copy and paste the caption from there if it's a longer one. Um, but you know, doing it, it's all repetition. Uh, you, you'll get good at it over time. Um, but it, 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 it does get tedious at certain moments, especially whenever you want to have, obviously publishing something, you want to have correct grammar and spelling and it's not Certainly. always easy. Yeah. I, I have to send myself an email, just the description. For example, when this goes out, I'm going to have to email myself the description about what we talked about, who you are, where the people could find you. I email <laughs> that content to myself, copy it, then paste it over to Instagram. It just seems there has to be a better solution. Maybe there is, and I don't yeah. know. Maybe I, sometimes I fear I'm 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 growing older, and I'm still an uh, analog guy in a digital world. I don't know. Maybe maybe I could, <laughs> hopefully I'm wrong. But um, uh, you were deleted off of Instagram recently. Tell how large was your following before you were removed? Why were you removed? Um, and does it make you think twice about um, posting conflict news and conflict journalism to a Facebook-owned product? Yeah. So, I mean, it was a real gut shot, man. You know, um, how large were I, you? I was at 13, I was, I was at like 12.8 or 12.9. So I would just say 13,000 followers. Um, I was actually on the app when it happened and I just got a message just said, boom, your account has been disabled. Uh, Did I they tell you why? What was the specific no. post? They, they, so sometimes they'll just shadow ban you, right? Sometimes they'll give right. you a, a few warnings. But in your mm -hmm. case, they actually just shut you down with with no explanation. Yeah. So I was here's the thing: I was shadow banned. Um, okay. That account was shadow banned, um, without a doubt. I could tell because I would, you know, if I ever met somebody, or I, if I knew somebody didn't follow me on Instagram, I'm like, hey man, can you just do something for me? Can you just search the name the Filthy American and see where it pops up? And even though it was the most followed followed page with that, you know, with that Instagram handle or anything similar to it, it still appeared at the bottom of the list. Um, so. But to answer your question, I got absolutely no explanation. Um, I, I mean, I always followed Instagram's community guidelines. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't posting anything too outrageous. Um, 
you know, the, the, I mean, the, the most violent things that I would post, like, for example, with what was going on in Kabul with, you know, the men that were falling from the planes right. or after that one bomb attack. I mean, hell, I was seeing that shit on CNN, you know, five sure. minutes later. You know sure. what I mean? Like, 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 and I was like, it just, it really does, it really does piss me off because, you know, me and uh, some of the other uh, news outlet, news accounts on Instagram, we've talked about this actually. And it, the frustrating part is that, and this is, this is, this is what really gets me is that at the end of it all, we are the ones that are driving traffic to the application. And we are the reason why, and not, uh, not solely us, but we, you know what I'm saying? We sure. are, we're yeah. driving traffic, we're providing them. So content the creators. To run yeah, exactly. And, you know, obviously, you know, Instagram, you know, what they look for is they look for, you know, I don't know, like influencers that are more in the traditional sense of traditional, but it's rather new, but you know, you know what I mean? Like, you know, young people that are beautiful and, you know, post, you know, pictures of themselves in the gym or at the beach or like living the lifestyle everybody wants to live, you know what I mean? Right. Or people that have accounts with, you know, you know, like car accounts or, you know, accounts of, you know, architecture, whatever you want. But, you know, it seems that, you know, reporting on uh, geopolitics is like in this gray area that they don't like. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly a subject area that's contentious. It plays upon one's own political ideology. So, I mean, it 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 certainly builds frustration, as you said. It certainly um, uh, ignites debate and argumentation uh, arguments in 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 your um, in your comment section, for better or for worse. Mm -hmm. um, some of the images are difficult to look at. Doesn't necessarily mean that they are bloody or, um, or uh, uh, you know, um, I'm not sure what the what the best word is, but they certainly they still fall within the purview of what is accepted in terms of their community guidelines. But it does. Yeah, I think you're right. There's something about um, just political news and specifically some of the images and memes that accounts like yours share that are looked upon with a very skeptical eye. Um, from from uh, uh, those that that manage uh, Facebook, Instagram, and, and and even Twitter at times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what's, just just to go off what you're saying, I personally like if I was to find myself politically, um, I don't mean to be a fence sitter, but I'm pretty much moderate on all issues. You know, I used to be a rather opinionated person when it came to politics, but you know, the more I learn, the more I realize both sides has problems. Sure. Um, and now the thing is though, it's like. My my theory is that um, if you are posting things that are have to do with you know politics, uh, geopolitics, or any news in general, um, <clears throat> you have to, you you just, it, it's instantly skeptical. And I don't mean to say that you know there's some you know cabal or like you know there's a, like they sit down at a meeting at you know Facebook headquarters and they're like, hey, listen, there's these guys that are like posting this stuff. But I just I don't think that it runs what we're posting like. Not all of it. I think that I think that a fair amount of it does not run with the general narrative that, you know, is looked upon with favor, um, and you know that's why I think our you know our problem, which was also frustrating because you know with my account I try to keep the the reporting non biased. Um, obviously, it's somewhat of a paradox to say that you know when you report you're completely non biased because sure. obviously your biases do show through. But at the end of it all, I do attempt to be as objective as I possibly can and simply state facts. Yeah, no, fair enough. I mean, and, and, and I guess regardless of what your political slants would be, regardless of what you're posting, even if you gave no um, caption or description of, of the things you're posting, I mean, I guess it's a little bit of a challenge to even understand whether or not it's an actual person at Instagram shutting you down or giving you warnings, mm -hmm. or if it's the algorithm that's um, identifying you as a problem. Um, mm. I, I imagine that there are conversations already about um, an alternative platform in which conflict journalists and, and, and content creators and, and this sort of um, uh, next evolution of, of uh, this new type of reporting where this could possibly live. Because I, I am pretty cynical about this stuff. I, I don't see Instagram and Facebook and, and these um, larger platforms as being very sustainable for some of the uh, mm -hmm. hobby work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I completely agree. Yeah. So, I mean, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, are you are you prepared to move your project to another platform, or do you know? Have you heard of any rumblings from other people that are involved about about doing something like that? I mean, what's the um, what's the solution here for trying to get away from uh, Instagram and stuff? So here's the problem, right? 
so if you try and jump ship on, you know, like, like the, you very commonly use social media platforms, you're going to end up in most social media platforms. Like, let's just take Telegram, for example. Um, you know, you could pretty much post whatever the fuck you want on Telegram. Like, mm-hmm. not everything, but you could pretty much do whatever you want and, like, nobody's going to bat an eye. The problem is, is that whenever you start getting in those waters, um, people will associate you with fringe, you know, political elements because right. that's where they live. Um, that's the issue that I see is, um, I know, should know more about this. What is telegram? I mean, I've heard about it, but, but I'm not, yeah. I'm not, not on it. To, 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 so it's, it's, it's like this, um, and so it's a social media app, obviously, but it, um, it, it's, it functions differently than Instagram. Um, so the way it works is you could have, you have different channels you can join, but you're only able to join if you receive the link for the channel. Okay. Um, and it's all, it's very interesting how it works. I don't know all the ins and outs. But, um, is it mobile only or is this through a browser? So you could, it's mobile and on your desktop. Really. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so you could use both. Um, so you could either have, so the way um, I've seen certain accounts, like let's say Atlas News, for example, I've seen him. He, uh, you know, he'll post things like, like you'll literally see some of his newer captions and be like, okay, uh, you know, this is happening. And, you know, there was recently, I think it was like Houthi Rebels, like executed uh like 13 men in the street and like the, the videos are super graphic so all he posted on instagram were like this the pictures of the men prior to their execution but then he captioned the the, the photo saying if you want to see the video check out the telegram channel a link is in our bio and so you know if you wanted to go further you're able to go to telegram and, and check it out okay yeah um so I mean, was this what was the what was the social media platform that came up right that like when all the uh, Trump supporters wanted to hop on? Oh after? yeah, Parler. Parler, right? Now, so is, is 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 this similar? Is this a similar thing, or is this more um, is this more anti-establishment underground where where conflict journalism and stuff like this, like some of the some of the more um, I guess war porn stuff would would live? Yeah. Okay. 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 So Parler was interesting because I was I was on Parler simply to collect information sure um there are many journalists that joined many many journalists yeah yeah, just to find out the activity and what actually was to come (laughs) come of this right so yeah yeah. what was your experience Um, there so parlor um i mean i joined parlor like january 3rd and by january 5th i was seeing all this shit being posted about you know January 6th, be at the Capitol, rah, rah, rah. Right. Um, but Parler was, the way, the way that I looked at it, it was basically just like Twitter for people who had been banned off Twitter or right. conservatives. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, now, Telegram, like, dude, Telegram is the Wild West, okay? Like, pretty much. Um, like, I, I'm in chats on Telegram of, like, you ever heard of, uh, you, I don't know if you've heard of Wagner Group or Wagner Group. Uh, yeah, yeah. We've covered, covered, yeah. covered them on this podcast and uh, about to have another episode because they are um, they just signed a contract to potentially operate in Mali. Um, oh, really? So uh, yeah, uh, I've been, we've been tracking tracking their their presence um, throughout Sub-Saharan Africa for for years now. Uh, but yeah. we can we can I can talk to you about that um, later if you're interested. But yeah, yeah, very familiar with them. So they um I'm I'm actually on Telegram. I somehow found my way into their like chat. And like, not everybody in there is a part of their group, obviously. Um, mostly they post like propaganda pieces, um, but they, like, they they go raw, man. It's really raw. You know what I mean? Like so, the stuff that they post. So who who is in there? Are you able to verify that those are Wagner uh, private military officials, private security uh, officials, or are they simply hobbyists uh, who are talking about what Wagner is doing? Do, so for my understanding... Able- Go ahead. But from my understanding, is it's a uh, it's I, what I think it is, and I haven't made a super deep dive of, like looking through every single sure. post because I have like you know thirty channels I look through and skim through. It seems to be a recruiting tool for them, um, and they mostly post propaganda. And you know, every once in a while, they they'll, they'll post like a report on some you know action that occurred. Um, but that's about it. And it, uh, to answer your question, I cannot verify that it's ran by somebody that in in. Uh, in Wagner group. What, what makes you think it's a recruiting tool? I'm just curious. Just, I'll, I'll just it, because of the amount of propaganda they post. Um, mm-hmm. Like literally, I'll, I'll send it to you after this podcast. I could send you the. I don't know if you saw. It, I posted it, but the uh, the recruitment video that they okay. uh, they put out. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I saw some. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a Russia Russia um, uh, developed um, YouTube video that I saw. I believe that's where most most people saw it. Um, 
uh, I don't know if that's the same thing you're talking about. They, they there was a, a very pro Wagner group um, video uh, that was essentially looked like a movie trailer um, highlighting uh, them in a very positive light and their operations in uh, the Congo. Um, uh, I've seen that recently. Um, I know that mm -hmm. there are uh, uh, reputable journalists out there. Many of those, uh, many of them um, who have worked for uh, or who have uh, written and published in foreign policy, um, who are desperately trying to get in touch with active Wagner Group. Obviously, it's very difficult for them to get in touch or even get um, access to uh, uh, Wagner personnel because they don't talk, and I don't know why they would. Um, but there have been journalists that have gotten some um, who have since left the business, since left the organization um, that way. So I don't know. I'd be very interested. Yeah, if you can uh, send that to me after the call, it'd be great because um, uh, that would be useful. Uh, I think uh, the world has more of a right to know about um, what this uh, organization is doing. And hell, if they're on uh, Telegram, let's, uh, let's see who they are. But um, nevertheless, um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, please continue. To tell me where, where you think this all might be headed, and if you're if you're if you're planning on, or tell me what you're planning on doing with the Filthy American. I mean, for now, you're staying on Instagram, right? I mean, are you branching yeah. out to other other social media platforms, um, or are you preparing to make the leap um, somewhere else where you can um, um, post more things that are not in jeopardy of being um, uh, of removing your entire channel? Right. So what I'm, what I'm thinking about doing is I'm probably going to end up uh, nerfing what I post on my Instagram um, and kind of, you know, rolling it back and make sure that I'm like, you know, you know, definitely not going in into any gray area with Instagram, you know, just be a goody two shoes and not mess with sure. it anymore. Um, and then, you know, I definitely want to branch off into YouTube and do more, you know, in-depth analysis of, you know, certain issues in the world. Um, but when I don't, I, here's my thing is I, I, I see two things. I see a handful of things happening rather like possibilities. It, well, the first one's rather unlikely is that there's some legislation passed in the U S in the next, you know, five to 10 years, um, uh, that basically mandates these companies that, that run these, you know, social media platforms, they have to treat these things as like similar to utilities, um, the problem is, is that, you know, today it's very difficult to run a small business, um, especially what I'm trying to do, but any business whatsoever without having a social media presence. And the issue is, is that if you could be simply muzzled and taken out of like a, not being able to use a crucial tool for your business, whatever it is, um, it's detrimental to what you're trying to do. It doesn't matter what you're doing. I mean, you could be uh, like a baker. You could just be stuff, make, making cakes or whatever. Um, and you're just trying to promote that stuff on like, you know, something stupid like TikTok, for example. Right. Which is like a legitimate thing. Um, so, I mean, I think that, you know, you might see legislation in the next five to 10 years. I think that might, that's rather unlikely though. Um, the other option, which would be something similar to Parler, would be somebody coming around and saying, look, we need to, you know, have like a, a social media platform where you know our our whole mission statement is that we want to allow discourse you know obviously not discourse that is illegal but um allow discourse without you know uh stepping in and being big brother right right i guess probably one of their one of one, like instagram's um critique of this um new burgeoning um social media enclave that 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 you are a part of is that um because you're not a part of any sort of mainstream organization or because you are not um you don't have the label as a professional journalist or professional reporter then uh, your content is up for grabs and uh, your content is is um even more suspect and that's why they have less of an issue of taking you offline i mean can you tell me if you what your thoughts are about the responsibility of online journalists like yourself? Because I mean, where's the line between what you're trying to do to inform, entertain? Where's the line between war porn, conflict porn, and um, conflict analysis? I don't know if that's too much of an academic question, but no, uh, no, 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 no. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, I, you know, obviously, I, I guess, I, I suppose I am, I am a reporter now with what I do. Um, and I, I take that responsibility, um, 
you know, very, very, very uh, seriously. It's, um, you know, there have been a couple of times that I've been burned by mis misinformation through my channels. And every time that happens, I, I you know, I publish you know, a redaction and an apology for the misinformation. Um, however, um, when it comes to things like, you know, you know, when it comes to putting up things like, you know, for example, like, you know, war porn or, um, you know, just images that are graphic, you know, for the sole sake of the being graphic, like, oh, look at this execution, this is crazy or something along those lines, you know, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not into that, you know, um, you, you know, obviously, for example, the, you know, I think the most recent, you know, thing that happened with whole thing in Kabul with the bombing, you know, those videos were incredibly graphic. And I, 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 what I posted personally was the censored versions of them, where all the bodies were blurred. Obviously, that doesn't, you know, take away from, you know, the traumatizing factor of watching the video. But, you know, for me, it's more about the information that I'm conveying, as opposed to, you know, having a, a video that is shocking. Sure. Yeah. 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 For sure. I mean, I remember um, uh, during the initial uh, throes of the war on terror, this is 2003, 2004, 2005, uh, when I was a correspondent with the Swiss Institute of Technology, uh, covering a lot of these stories um, online at the time. Um, the internet had only been about 15 years old. Uh, at least commercially, widely commercial ac accessible. Um, you couldn't even really get to, this is before Instagram exists. This is before, before, uh, right around when Facebook was just starting. Um, the first smartphone that I think really anybody had was, was coming out right around that time. Um, the only place you could actually find um, uh, videos of uh, like beheadings, for example, that were very popular mm -hmm. uh, at the time. Many people just certainly, rightfully so, refused to watch them. But for whatever reason, um, they leaked to the internet at LiveLeak. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but it's, yeah, uh, it's yeah, a very yeah. old uh, old website. I think it's still actually still running. Um, but that's where that's where uh, conflict journalists and stuff like that uh, got a lot of their sources. Um, that and a few of the um, the uh, alt rooms on some of the some of the uh, old bulletin boards that are still that were still around at the time, um, but yeah, yeah, it's certainly it's certainly interesting what's going to wind up uh, to to watch what happens with all of this. Yeah, and here, here's uh, the thing, I, I you know you start talking about you know being you know a journalist that doesn't have the label of being you know uh, yeah. you know being a professional journalist, which is absolutely true. During you know during the past before my account got um, you know zucked or banned. You know, like three weeks before that, I was getting contacted by by journalists at CNN asking for my footage and where did I get it, which I thought was interesting. I'm like, how the hell does a 21 year old college kid, you know, have, you know, you don't, I don't mean to sound arrogant, but at the time, how did I, how am I, how do I have better sources than, you know, CNN? It made no, absolutely no sense to me. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know the answer to that. I mean, first of all, their their world politics coverage is two guys in a room and they only cover <laughs> feel good. One of those guys is covering feel good stories all day. It's one about one little girl who who made it to school one day in Afghanistan. That's that's what they cover. That's that's world politics for CNN. Um, they, they don't they don't know. And if they I mean, if they do come across some of the same material that you're gathering and posting, um, they put it in their archive bin. They, they, they put it in the stuff CNN will never consider uh, to, to publish. So, I mean, um, I mean, I, I'm certainly, I would love to know where you get some of your, obviously you don't have to reveal any of your sources, but I mean, I, I imagine you're spending your time scouring the deep web, just scouring the, 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 the back alleyways of Twitter. Um, mm -hmm probably the back alleyways of reddit uh these are not places that cnn is concerned with they don't they're not going to bother looking there because they simply um they know that like just even venturing down those streets are not going to uh provide any sort of um uh fruitful ratings or publications for that they're not going to cover that right. stuff right. um and if they cover anything the the most that they'll do is send Clarissa Ward out and and <laughs> she'll interview somebody. And look look no no hate on her. Look she's she's done she's for what for what she was hired to do she's doing what she is hired to do right. But that's as far as it goes. I mean you're not getting um, anything subversive. You're not getting anything that's going to make you uh, cringe or or um, or wince. Um, nothing that's going to make make anyone um, um, uh, motivate. Uh, 
themselves to uh, to uh, become interested in any of these conflicts or uh, or the victims of these conflicts, right? I mean, yeah. CNN is, is simply um, uh, in the business of kind of being a little bit of um, the Hallmark channel when it comes to uh, global conflict. If you watch them all day long, you'd have no idea that any gun was being fired anywhere. Yeah, I, I'm completely with you on that one. Yeah. Um, let me ask you, I, got, I, got, I actually want to get your, your thoughts on this. What did you think about the whole, um, uh, what is it, they call it the Pineapple Express, the whole thing. It was like those uh, volunteers who were ex-military that went into Kabul to try and uh, evacuate people. Um, so you, are you talking about uh, uh, Eric Prince's offer? Um, um, I, 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 don't, I don't know. Are you talking about Eric Prince's offer where he was offering six, six grand a person to, to be airlifted out of Afghanistan? No, I'm talking about there was. Um, I'm not sure that I'm familiar with the Pineapple Express. I do remember one story, and this probably this may be it as well, um, where there was a group of vigilantes. They weren't associated with any sort of um, yeah, um, uh, like private military company, uh, but I believe there were there were some uh, vig- uh, vigilante groups that were attempting to, um, uh, or they made the claim that they would be able to rescue civilians out of. Um, a variety of places in Afghanistan. So maybe that's what you're talking about. Uh, I don't know too much about it. I'm, I'm, uh, it's, it's, uh, the phenomenon is interesting, right? Because, um, uh, there were, um, some recent images that I think, uh, um, were published by Popular Front showing, um, what looked like American servicemen uh, I believe somewhere in West Africa after a coup. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you remember this? This is recent. Yeah, I do. I can't yeah. remember the country. Uh, so shame on me. But um, uh, part of the reason I don't pay too much attention to this sort of stuff is because we live in this new media uh, saturated age. Um, there are uh, many white Europeans, uh, white Americans that show up in these places, slap an American flag on their arm, and they're doing it to get attention on social media somehow. They're actually not legitimate. Um, they're actually not like any type of um, a soldier of fortune or associated with anything. And maybe they are, right? But I mean, all we have are some of those, uh, some of those videos or some of the claims that they make uh, about rescuing civilians or being involved in a coup. I mean, I don't know why. Uh, when the United States gets involved in a coup, for example, Sorry if I'm kind of talking all over the place. It's no, not going didn't. to, it's not going to be Amer- you're not going to see American servicemen brandishing a flag, right? So I mean, mm-hmm. it makes you wonder like what, what what are these guys even doing? And because you can't really verify stuff, uh, unless you have a source there or you're able to dig, it's almost um fu- a futile attempt to find out what's going on, um, which is unfortunate, right? Um, this mm-hmm. whole this whole uh, internet, the internet saturation was supposed to make things more transparent and visible and it's done the opposite it's it's clouded it's muddied the waters and we really don't know any more than what we really used to yeah, um, yeah you would think given everybody a printing press would you know bring out you know the truth but it seems yeah, to no. the opposite yeah uh, it's, it's a lot of conflicting information stuff like that but in terms of uh what happened in Kabul, I, i'm not sure what happened with that with the, that the, that team of raconteurs um, if you've heard anything, I'm, I'm happy to hear. I don't know, but the only thing I really heard from the from the private military side of things uh, was that Eric Prince, former uh, uh, president of Blackwater, um, had been offering uh, civilians uh, 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 evacuations out of Kabul um, if they could make it to the airport, um, and, and the, the tickets were, or that he was charging six thousand dollars per. Um, oh, really. Yes, uh, it, it made news uh, all the way up to Jin Saki, the press secretary, who uh, badmouthed him and badmouthed that policy. I mean, on one hand, I understand it. It's very expensive to provide security detail on the ground. Um, he's probably uninsured, unlicensed uh, personnel who are trying to protect. Be- I mean, it's six thousand is uh, is 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 uh, horrendous. It's, it's it's very expensive number, but I mean, in the great scheme of things. If you're a civilian and you needed to get out of there, 
6,000 at the end of the day, not that much, you know, uh, not to be trapped with, uh, uh, you know, ISIS K or the Taliban. Oh, so, so he, he, wait, okay. So he was offering like any, so he was offering for anybody, he would pay $6,000. Oh, okay. Yeah, wow. He paid six wow. grand. You were able to get on his, uh, uh, play. Now I don't know if he was already on the ground in Kabul. Um, right. I don't know if that was just, a, uh, you know, uh, him promising that service, but, as far as I understand, he responded to Jin Saki's criticism um, that that is the price at cost that it would take to provide security detail. Um, uh, that means secure passage in and around the airport to get you, if you were able to make it to, I guess, a certain, a certain checkpoint to get civilians or even non-civilians from that area uh, with uh, hired guns to the airport to the specific tarmac he had a private plane on, uh, I, I don't know. I don't even know that anybody took him up on that offer. Um, it certainly could have been um, just a ploy to get back into the news to criticize the Biden administration. He does like to do that. So, I mean, right. Um, yeah, uh, that's, that, I mean, well, that's all I've heard about. I, that. Since we're on this topic, I got to ask you, you know, like, sure. You know, my, my perspective on what, what happened in Afghanistan in terms of how we left is, is this. Um, okay, the ball for us to leave was rolling. Joe Biden and his administration, first of all, I, I don't believe, I don't believe for a second that Joe Biden is running that shit. I don't know who's running the government. I don't know who's doing all that. Somebody or so, a group of people are calling the shots. The administration, the current administration got that ball and I feel like they dropped it. What, what do you, what do you think happened? Like, yeah, I mean, you're it, not the only it one. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, there. If, uh, operationally, uh, it was very hasty, um, um, but I think uh, withdrawing that quickly and without um, uh, an exit strategy, uh, right here, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, without an, a, a, a solid exit strategy, I mean, stuff like this is, is bound to happen. Um, uh, it's not a, a, a very hot take to criticize the 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 exit strategy that did uh, occur. So I mean, it's not it's it's not going to be uh, it's not brave of me to criticize the information. I mean, everybody uh, across all party lines um, found this to be a, a massive debacle, and uh, it will go down in history as one of the um, really mm -hmm. uh, um, most short-sighted and, 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 and stupid operations that put so many people in harm's way that, that uh, uh, unnecessarily. Um, uh, I mean, the history books will be written and we'll see what they say, but uh, um, what's more interesting, I think, is, is the degree to which uh, the United States will still be involved uh, uh, in uh, Afghanistan and um, how relations with the Taliban uh, proceed. Uh, certainly, uh, these country boys do not know how to run a country. They, they, mm. and now they've inherited one. We'll see if they, if they really know uh, what it takes. I mean, obviously, we did a terrible job too. We didn't really know how to run it, um, um, uh, and we didn't know how to run it in tandem with uh, an installed government. Now they've, now they have the chance to show the world the country is in their hands. Let's see what happens. I mean, that's that's the interesting thing, right? Let's mm. see what a Taliban-controlled country looks like. Uh, it doesn't look like it's uh, going to bode well, and that that country will probably um, uh, devolve into civil war. Uh, um, uh, that is along along ethnic and and probably economic factions. Um, mm. We'll see. I mean, uh, I'm not a great Afghanistan expert, but um, certainly. Uh, um, it doesn't look good for anybody involved. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people caught in the middle um, there that, uh, you know, we'll have to uh, keep an eye on, you know. Um, and that's certainly the largest conflict that, that, that is, is on everybody's radar at the moment. But, um, you know, there are a lot of others um, uh, around the world that are, that are, that are happening and, and that um, uh, major media are quiet about. Um, the Tigray crisis in Ethiopia, for example, yes, not yes. too far away from from Afghanistan, uh, but a totally different kind of type of conflict. Uh, very little media coverage. Not really um, the fault of media, but because it's been, it's kind of a black hole. There's there's very very little people on the ground. The, that government has um, expelled many journalists, uh, so it's very difficult to get 
um, real true information uh, about what's happening there. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, this all, all of this comes back to the irony that um, the internet and interconnectability and um, more information and resources were supposed to give us a more transparent and open world. Um, it doesn't look like that uh, that goal has come to fruition. Not to say that it may, it may not still um, come to fruition one day, but um, right now um, we're in just uh, 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 in as much of ignorance as, as we ever have been. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think it's interesting that you brought up Africa. You know, um, I used to do, I don't do as much anymore, but I used to do like uh, pretty in depth history posts that mainly focus on wars. And I, for about a good week, three week period, I just focused on, you know, African wars in Africa in the uh, in the 20th century, and that is mind blowing. The yep. amount of stuff that went on there it's 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 such like a, I don't know how to explain it, but you don't you don't learn about it. Nobody you know brings this up to you at any point in your life if you're just an average person. But the amount of fucked up shit that goes on there is yeah. it's mind blowing. Yeah, on one hand, it's it's a, it's it's a bane of of uh, of African culture and and the countries on in that continent. Um, because in the West, Africa is characterized often by its conflict and its um, inability to escape um, political and, and um, lethal conflict, right? Um, so it's a, it's a fine line one has to, uh, one has to, um, to travel down because, I mean, on one hand, uh, it, it kind of hurts the reputation if you're only talking about African co conflict when there's so much more to, uh, to the political and, and economic right. landscape of that, of that continent. But um, yeah, I mean, you're right. You know, there's there's a lot of small arms conflict that are happening along that continent, a lot of which is not getting any kind of international coverage, um, probably because we've been inundated with with that stereotype for years. Uh, for me, it's something that's still uh, highly fascinating and and to, to watch the evolution of conflict over um, a period of years since decolonization has been has been right. Quite, quite fascinating for me, but that's just my own uh, personal thing. But nevertheless, um, uh, we're almost at time. I want to give you a chance to talk about anything else regarding your channel. Um, maybe give us some, um, what are your, what are your plans uh, to come? I mean, where are you looking to start a small business? I heard you say, what, what are you, are you able to talk about that? Like, what are your what are, what's 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 going to be new with the filthy American? Right. So um, I guess at this point, um, you know, I, like I said, I'm a college kid. I have a job. You know, I, I work. I'm in college. I got to go class, do my homework, and everything, and do this on the side. And as much time, free time as I have, I try and put into this project I got going on. Um, are you in I a related would... focus? Are you studying something related? No, I'm not. Not oh, at okay. All. Not at all. Yeah, unfortunately, not. Um, but I would say, um, you know, I, I kind of, I, I need to earn my chops. You know what I mean? I need to, I think the next thing, the next step for what I'm trying to do here is I'll probably end up trying to do, uh, some, some serious on the ground field work, um, uh, whatever that might be. I'm looking to try possibly go to Kurdistan just because I grew up there and I have contacts there and I'll be able to get in pretty easily. It's not, it's not hard to get to Kurdistan, but I'll be able to get in and, you know, do some work there fairly easily. Um, but you know, in the long term, I, I would like to do. I would like this to sustain me, and I would like to do quality, uh, quality conflict journalism. Sure. As you said the earlier part. Um, but like I said, you know, I only have so much free time on my hands now, and right. you know, the free time that I do have, I try and fit towards this project. Fair enough. I mean, I'm in, I'm in the same boat. I mean, I, I do this. Uh, this podcast uh, pays nothing. It's a passion project for me. I like to talk about people who are interested in the same things and. Um, it was something to do during COVID. It was travel is pretty much dead. Uh, but as a burgeoning, I guess, I don't know, geopolitical analyst, I mean, I've done a lot of that work in the past, not so much anymore, but um, um, I'm getting back into that world. Uh, and I was in Ethiopia pre-Tigray War, um, then COVID hit, and um, now we're, we're, we're looking to get back in and, and getting, some, um, getting some, some real interesting and original content. Um, Really? Sounds, yeah, yeah. That sounds that's, amazing. That's, that's on the amazing. horizon. That's on the horizon. So yeah, you'll, I mean, I, I'll, I'll make an announcement when, when that trip is, is, is all organized and, and set, but uh, uh, I'm going to try to do like a three country tour in that area, in that region. Um, and obviously 
uh, this show exit strategy will take a hiatus because I mean, I'll, I'll just be unable to produce anything during that time. And it's going to take a couple of months of travel to um, get through it all. But um, nevertheless, I appreciate your time, Chase. Uh, thanks. Pleasure to meet you. Um, plug your, uh, your Instagram, plug your social media. How can people contact you? How can people follow you? Um, plug away. Yeah. Yeah, so if you guys want to check out my work, I'm on Instagram. That's where I mostly post most of my content. It's, uh, the new handle with my current account is the Filthy American 2.0. But hopefully, if the uh, powers that be at Facebook headquarters want to release my old account back to me, it will just be the Filthy American. But only time where time will tell. I'm also on YouTube. Uh, same handle, just the Filthy American on YouTube. I got some pretty great footage up there of when I was uh, at the Capitol on January 6th. Cool. If anybody wants to check that out. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got, man. Awesome. Were you able to download all of the content that you had on the old channel or if you've lost it all? Is that, is that Oh, right? it's all gone. It's all gone. Just like So I know that there was originally like they had they don't they didn't they give you the option of being able to download stuff if you got booted or or, or am I I think is, I think is, there is a way. I, I did remember reading something about that when as soon as my account got banned, because I was trying to see ways I could, you know, appeal to ban. I do remember reading something very quickly about a way to download your data. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what that entails, though. I don't know if it's necessarily my posts and everything, or if it's just, you know, analytics. I'm not sure. Yeah. If you find out, let me know. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, the filthy American. I appreciate your time, Chase. Thanks so much. And uh, yeah, appreciate your time. Thank you. Sure, brother. Appreciate it. All right.